to you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our fifth day of COP here at Amazon Legal. Today, our space is going to have seven panels. This is going to be a very busy day, even though it's Saturday. I would like to invite you all who are watching via the internet to watch the panel we have today. This is going to be a panel organized by ACRI. It is going to be about the pluriannual plan, a 10-year plan, actually, for the sustainable development of ACRI from 2023 to 2033. We're going to have Vasche Albuquerque Quintana Queiroz, from the head of the Department of Governance, Governor Gladson Jirima Carmeli, and Rosineide Mendonça Sena. I'm going to pass the floor directly to Rodrigo from PGE Acre, and I'm going to request everyone who needs translation to pick up the simultaneous translation headphones that we have available and have a great day and a great event. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are here at COP this Saturday. I am a public lawyer, a state lawyer for 20 years, and I follow the daily life of public policies, and there's no doubt that uh, joining the public policies of a planning that makes sense and that makes sense together is very important. We cannot have actions and activities that remain in silences and that sometimes compete in terms of outcomes. We have a risk of a short-term view and putting out fires. Sometimes it's hard to have a contextual view of the public policies. So having a 10-year plan for the state planning is essential. Throughout time, So knowing where you're going to, even though it's not precise, gives you a direction, and that makes you have short cycles of planning. The state in general already has a basic structure of the public policy. So theoretically, there should be similar things to this, but in practice, you, we already know what it is to have sectoral indicators and metrics. Uh, planning out this nature like the state is doing is absolutely necessary. Now we have the support of the Don Cabral Foundation, which I think adds to this idea of uh, the people of Acre are the ones who know what needs to be done, and we have the methodology to help us help bloom what we already know and what we already can do. I'm going to pass the floor to Vasti for her presentation, and then we are going to reflect on her presentation for the next 20 to 30 minutes. Thank you, doctor. Before I pass, uh, start my presentation, I have to talk about my joy to be here. This is my first COP, and I will start my first COP by representing my state in such an honorable way, talking about the development of the state where I come from. It is a small state, but a very strong state that needs this, these policies to grow even more. I'm going to ask Jay to put on my presentation. I'm going to introduce myself to the few ones that don't know me. I am an Amazonian. I learned this term here. I really liked it. I am only 38 years old, and I had the chance to see a little bit of this development happening since uh, the Road 364 didn't exist yet. I see this happening little by little. Unfortunately, I see the degradation of our forests, and I've been through several phases of this development. 
I grew up in the middle of this huge valley in the forest. I grew up in this small village and then I moved to Rio Branco, our capital. I saw different singularities of the state. So when I talk about this plan in partnership with the Don Cabral Foundation, I talk about it with a lot of pride and a lot of hope that this will work because this is going to be much more than a professional professional acknowledgement, professional accomplishment. It's going to be a personal accomplishment. I'm very optimistic and I hope that you like what I, I will present today. There's always a joke that Akari is the end of the world, but and to those who joke with that, I would like to say that we are in the beginning of the world. I brought you a few figures to contextualize our state. We have uh, a little bit more than 160,000 square kilometers. We are 1.9% of the national territory. We have a little bit more than 900,000 uh, people. We are 2.3% of the Amazonian population. We are few, but we are very noisy. We are 80. We have 85% of the vegetation coverage, a little bit behind people from Amapá. From those 85%, 55% are protected areas. We are doing well regarding our protected areas. And I let the state of for less for for last we have four percent of the brazilian amazon uh we i let the state for last because we are the most populated state people are spread out throughout the state this makes a lot of difference because when we think about this population we have to make the policies reach everywhere even though the state is not big this gives us a little bit more work. We have municipalities that are extremely isolated and that gives us a little bit more difficulty in making those policies reach these places. This has been a challenge throughout the years. I am in the state government since 2017 and we have seen this as a challenge throughout our work in the state government. Having said that, I would like to go to the plan itself and i would like to say that i'm going to stick to the results because i'm going to leave the methodology to our professor we have um, made this plan in three great areas and before i talk about the areas i would like to talk about our future vision for this 10-year plan our future vision has as one of the main views having Acre as a land of opportunity. We hope people see this state as a land of opportunity. Actually, this state has already seen like this. Many people that are in Acre are not there, but they were welcomed as a Korean. They feel like they are from there. My director, for example, they are, he is from Alagoas, but he feels like he was born in Acre. He talks about it very often. And we want Acre to remain this land of opportunity for the Acre and those who come from outside and fell in love with Acre. Andre is one of these people. Something else that we want for a future vision is that Acre is a socially fair. And I cannot think about the future without looking at the past. I need, I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm going to take a sip of water. I have to remember the past, like the past that I lived. When I think about socially fair, there's a lot of things related to it. I brought this image, but it, it is much more than health. Knowing this reality, we now know that the citizens have access to this social justice, but we have a lot to deliver to those citizens. There's a lot of people who live off the forest, who live harmonically with the forest, but they need a little more dignity. We look at it, we look at these people who are in the forest very romantically, and I hope that they remain doing this because we need those people in the forest, but we need to deliver dignity and social justice to those people. And I say that as one of the people who lived there. And during my childhood, I needed 
medical expeditions that would come to the forest once a year to give us health assistance. So when we stop to think about it, this reality still happens today, not because the state doesn't want to give us health care, but because of the last lack of resources that we have. So this needs to be always in our horizon. We cannot neglect this or take this for granted. And we cannot take for granted having as a goal the sustain uh, environmentally sustainable. ACRI has been a model in this and searching for environmentally sustainable policies. We are pioneers in this matter, and I'm very proud of this. We cannot take this for granted, and we cannot um, be disaligned with the other requirement. This is the future vision for the next 10 years. Akari has to be a land of opportunity, has to be socially fair and environmentally sustainable. So these are the dimensions. These are the three great areas that I mentioned to you. We have these three great areas on which the plan was designed. And on them, we have the pillars of development so that we can deliver value to the society. We have, we're going to start talking about the basis, which is the collaborative governance. This is a pretty name for something we know how to do. I'm not going to read all of the, these goals. You can read them, and if you want to talk more about it, you can talk to us. We're going to be here all morning. I particularly am going to be here all day. And why did I say it's just a pretty name? When I say that Acri is a pioneer, and I'm happy that Dr. Rodrigo is next to me, uh, collaborative governance is something that we have expertise on because it started in our state with CISA. We have some. We have this as something established by law. We already have this in the environmental means. It's not something that Acri isn't used to doing with its citizens. CISA is the incentive system to environmental services. Now we want this to go beyond the environmental area. We want to take this to other areas because we are noticing the need to involve the citizens in this discussion. Our citizens of Acre, I'm going to place myself as a citizen of Acre because before being a worker, public worker, I'm a citizen of Acre. We are in love with our land. We may talk bad things about, we may talk ill about Acre, but nobody else can. We defend Acre and when they, every day, we as a government, we notice how much the citizens want to take part of the decisions. We are close to the government. So this is the moment we want, we are calling the civil society and the common citizen to take part in this decision so that in the next 10 years, everything that we decide for the, for the territory can be collaborative. And we have all the expertise at hand. We can co-create. And this is the basis for our 10-year plan. From this basis, which we believe will be a solid basis, we have the development pillars, a solid basis for the pillars to be developed. I'm going to focus on this first pillar a little more because I believe that it's more aligned with everything that has been discussed here in the space of the Amazon Legal Consortium. We talk about this first pillar of the reinvention of the production chains. We are consolidating the chains that still need to be consolidating, consolidated, diversifying the ecosystem services promoting the cultural tourism of the traditional populations. These three goals are very aligned with what is being discussed here every day. I'm, I had the opportunity of following these discussions that are happening here. The states are making a very nice job. Our neighbors um, are giving us very good examples. Sometimes we look for examples in other regions and we forget to look at our neighbors. neighbors because the situations are very similar. 
in the state of Akari, we have these objectives, these goals, which are not necessarily new goals for us. There might be something that we probably modified, but the difference is that now we want to strengthen this governance so that we can make sure that these goals are reached so that, that there is no discontinuity in these policies and that we can deliver the value that the society is waiting for us from us. Uh, why did I say that I was going to take longer in these objectives? Just to make it clear for you that this plan is encompassing our legal framework and all of the activities that we have already ongoing in the state. The PPCDQ, which is a plan that has been developed for 12 years. Besides the PPCDQ, we have the REM policy and other activities in the environmental area that are already ongoing. A development of that is going to be the PSA policy, all of our projects that are already approved or under approval phase, they already com converse with this. Our ideas that the other plans in the state can talk to this 10-year plan. That is why we invited other actors to talk to us so that they can feel welcomed in this idea, so that they can be part of this dialogue, and so that everyone could feel part of this plan. Because alone, we wouldn't be able to do this. And so we needed to bring these partners next to us so that we could feel strong. We needed this dialogue to remain this way so that we could build strategies with the civil society so that this plan can uh, move forward and we could get, have good results. From here on, I'm going to show the other pillars. I'm not going to read all of the results. I'm going to show them a little bit faster. And I'm going to pass to Paulo, pass the floor to Paulo to talk about the methodology. And then I'm going to open for questions. Now we are in, at the main point, the objective of the plan, the values we might deliver from the pillars with all the projects, with all the plans developed within this 10-year plan context, promoting the economic development with the use of natural resources, promoting the economic development, the div diversification and promotion of goods and services, and being the state with the greatest human development at the nor northern region. Acre fought to be part of Brazil, so we are fighters, So, and we know that we can also fight this battle. It won't be easy, but it's not impossible. So I should mention the courage of the Governor Gladstone when he was willing to buy this idea, advancing with this idea, because we're talking about a plan that goes beyond the four-year uh, term. 
he didn't even know if he would go on in the next four years. And as, as a public server, servant, I think it's relevant to speak about that because I've been working for 15 years in the state governor, and we always feel this discontinuity in the public policy. We notice that over different administration and each one has its positive points and negative points. This is natural. We see some excellent projects being discontinued after an administration ends. So what we wanted was to advance if this plan and we count on your support, Rodrigo, for this plan to be approved. Of course, that this plan must be revised, but it should be should guarantee the continuity of the good public policies. We shouldn't stop due to a political administration that changed so that we can guarantee that this is working regardless of the political administrations. Although we have the legal guarantee that the pluriannual plans are going to do that, we know that many times they are only lasting for years. That is too little. So once we implement it, we, we want to implement that with this, uh, with the guarantee of the state constitution, it should guarantee the policies which are based in this collaborative governance with all the community and this, uh, the civil society of Acre thinking together. And we should give this guarantee of continuity. It should, we should revise it when we need it. Uh, we should update whenever we need it, but uh, we should move on. So it was very brave that our governor was the head of this plan. I think this is commendable and it's going to be a great legacy for the state because we we really needed to to advance in the next 10 years so now i'd like to to give the floor to paulo guerra our professor who is helping us with this methodology and he will remind me if i forgot anything you didn't forget anything and Gashi and I was taking notes about some points that you've mentioned that are very important. I wanted to start with this last point about this issue that you've uh, mentioned about the, the courage of the governor. More than courage, he has shown a Republican spirit. And why is that? Because it's very natural that after the administration is over, the governor or the, the, the politician says, ah, I don't care what's coming. But that, there's an element that is key to the democracy, that is the transition process of a different administrations. When we are not uh, concerned about the legacy that we are leaving for the next administration, we are affecting ourselves, not only as a state, but also, and mainly, also mainly as a citizen. You said, I am a public servant, but I am also a, a citizen from Acre. And the governor as well, he's a governor today, but at some point he's going to be a common citizen of Acre. Rodrigo also mentioned a very important point, that is the planning as the guideline. We have in Brazil that this perspective that planning is something that you do once and then you follow that and that's over. This is the worst type of planning you could do because it's not guiding you in the decision-making process, it's limiting you. And this is very bad from the perspective of results and generation of public value. That's why I believe it's very important that we talk about methodology. And why is that? Because the plan is so strong as the methodology that, it, that was used to get to the results. We cannot forget that planning is uh, an idea of the realities. It's based on assumptions and the assumptions should be taken into account. Speaking about the issue of planning, and I think it's important to delve deeper in the methodology. All these boxes 
are forming the process to understand the, these boxes, it's worthwhile to understand how they emerged. They emerged from two perspectives, a geographic perspective that is expressed at the vertical axis and the time, timely perspective that is expressed at the horizontal axis. So what's below the, 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 the horizontal line, we are talking about the internal environment of the government of Acre and above the horizontal line, it's the external environment. To the left side of the vertical axis, we are talking about past and present. On the right, we are talking about the future and its understandings. So what was the the great north we wanted to use in this plan due to a decision of the state of Acre itself, a requirement of the state. It should be a plan that would go beyond the government sphere. So it should be a plan of the territory of Acre and not of the Acre's government. And this is very important because this is going to interfere in several stages. When we talk about listening to the population, one of the most important issues of the collaborative issue is that it should go beyond this, uh, this poncho participation. It should be uh, directly related to the uh, robustness of the proposal. So we try to equate both of these things using data analysis with uh, uh, history data and with economic data projecting this data and using some econometric tools, understanding how the evidences are uh, are dialoguing with the needs of the population. And we must understand that listening to the population starts not only from this logic of understanding the past, but also understanding what people want from then on and what they are willing to do as, as citizens of Acre to develop the state. After we understand the present reality, with data analysis, interviews in the focal groups. We then go to the second moment that is understanding what are the examples we have in our reality from other states, from other countries that could help Acre to solve its uh, challenges and at the same time potentialize and, co and realize what they what Acre has as, as the potential. So we analyze the trends of the international uh, market. This COP is showing many trends. So what are the trends of the international scenario and how they talk to the uh, Acre reality, creating favorable or unfavorable scenarios for the state of Acre? And we have to compare that with the instruction of the plan. We have the strategic architecture and we have the matrix of results and then the system of governance and monitoring of all that. So this is summarizing a little bit of everything that was made and many people used to ask, how long will you take that? It's a lot of time, right? Six months. It was a determination of the state of Acre is that it should be ready at the beginning of the new administration, whatever administration. So the idea behind this plan could be summed up in this slide. In the next slides now, we are going to observe some data of what was generated as input. So we started the first uh, results on the on July 1st, we signed the contract uh, one month before. We had this first diagnosis until 
July 1st, and then we started listening in the week of July 15, and then we started to listen to the society in August, and then we had the benchmarking, the trends, the SDGs, the uh, vision of the future, the results and objectives and strategy in October, and now we are validating all this, this framework with civil society. As I've mentioned before, the, we had a, 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 a term of six, we have this time of six months to develop that plan. Concerning data collection and analysis, we analyzed nine official reports, 13 database, and that generated eight result areas. We invited 126 institutions to participate in the interviews and focal groups. We had new interviews in 14 focal groups. We had 17 questions in the citizen service. We received 707 uh, answers in 14 municipalities, and we had an improvement point for the future. As much as we have 14 of the 22 municipalities represented, this representation is not relevant statistically speaking, because we didn't have a great participation of the countryside uh, municipalities. Each one of the uh, municipalities participated in a small way. So we had a concentration in the capital. That's okay that the capital is, uh, is representing almost 50% of the population in the state, but there's a distortion concerning the questionnaire. The benchmarking evaluated 18 good practices in five result areas, understood as the priority for the state right now. The trend were evaluated at the national, uh, national regional and state level in three big areas, economic, social, and environmental areas. And we developed three scenarios, optimistic, neutral, and pessimistic. We used the base as neutral, the continuity of the current moment, projecting the data for, uh, with the op optimistic part where based on what the state had achieved in a positive uh, moment. And we did the same in, with the pessimistic data concerning pessimistic scenarios. So we built that from the economic, uh, social, environmental standpoints. And we also could classify 51 opportunities and 62 challenges within the 70 sustainable development goals. Basti has mentioned the future view the future vision, and I believe this is very important because as Vasti mentioned, Acre is a land of opportunity, but it's seen as a land of opportunity, always looking at the future. And we want to realize that in a solid way, observing the present as well. The aspect of social justice is key to me because we are not speaking about development to have beautiful buildings. Uh, buildings. We are not talking about environmental uh, environmental development to have the standing forest. We must generate results for the people. And so the aspect of social justice is key and sustainable development, it's a must. We wouldn't be in this conference if we uh, if we thought it was irrelevant. So we should think about the future generations, but also in the present generations. That was the strategic ar architecture that was built. I won't talk about that, but she has mentioned the strategy, the idea of having this base on collaborative governance and the different pillars that are leading to the development and what are the greatest value for society that we should generate. I think it was interesting to say that in this design, we, did, we had not discussed culture and the group 
has asked that because we value so much culture in Acre that the group wanted this cultural aspect to be included. Well reminded, Vasi, we had another pillar of development that was the cultural pillar. Thank you. And then we have the objectives uh, in each one of the values. Vasi has presented that as well. We have the results matrix. So what is it? This is the consolidation of the objectives into indicators. The indicators have different targets and the targets are divided for the next 10 years. So we are going to develop that into a government plan because this is a territorial plan. So there are actions that are uh, responsibility of the government, some are responsibility of the civil society, some are of the private sector. So we generated 19 uh, strategic ob objectives and 37 indicators with targets for the next 10 years. And the system of governments and monitoring, we foresee three levels of monitoring, strategic made by the governor and his representatives in the sectoral uh, areas with the government and the secretariats and projects with the secretariats with their it's with their own projects the leader body was the secretariat of planning and management and we are going to issue decrees on that and we have this uh, this constitutional amendment proposal for the state of Acre plan in the long term. This is a demand in some state constitutions in Brazil, but Acre now is going to adopt that within its, its own constitution. For each one of the pillars we've talked about, we are going to constitute a, a stakeholder forum with the participation of civil society. That's it, basically, what we had to speak about and some important highlights that we consider important in Don Cabral Foundation was the desire to understand the wishes and needs of the population without the ideological filter. The idea was to talk to all uh, ideological representations to understand what were the needs and the wishes. We had commitment to the construction of plan for the territory, not only for the government, and the balance between the participation of the population and the technical robustness, the process, the self-developing process to ensure autonomy of public servants in the next planning round, rounds, because uh, Don Cabral Foundation does not perform consulting. We are as a management school. And so for the foundation, what is key in this process is building capacity for people, is enabling the public servants to have this ability to, to develop themselves in the next planning rounds so that they don't they will do that themselves with no external intervention. So here we had this big concern of developing this process through workshops and conceptual aligning and so on and so forth. And the understanding of the sustainable development process is something dynamic and complex. As Dr. Rodrigo said in the beginning, in the public administration, we usually work occasionally and that impacts negatively impacts the rest of the public administration so we should understand these interfaces among the elements of the system that is very important for us to dev to deliver concrete results improving the synergy and the efficiency i think we're open for questions now if we have time If you have any questions, we are open for questions now. Monica de los Rios, please have the microphone. First, 
First, I would like to congratulate the team for having this initiative of thinking long term. In one of the, my speeches, I highlighted the importance of having a long term plan to guarantee uh, a constant uh, reduction in emissions. And one of the roles here in this climate agenda is aligning your development strategy to adapt to climate changes. That is the focus point of this event. My uh, question is, oh, I really like to see all of the technical quality shown in the methodology, especially in this process of listening to the different perspectives and considering that this uh, that the objective is taking this to an amendment in the Constitution so that the state can have a long-term incentive. This is not supposed to be over in this version. This is supposed to be taken to the future generations. i just like to know if this uh, process of listening to the civil society, is this going to, before go to being transformed into an amendment to the Constitution, is this going to be transformed into a sectoral agreement to approve a long-term planning where the different sectors can visualize themselves as uh, authors in the planning of the strategy? That's exactly it. That is the exact intention. In my presentation, I talked a little bit about the sectoral forums. The idea of uh, the sectoral forums is to have this participation and the governance of the planning process coming not only from the government environment, but also coming from the society. That is the exact logic that we're searching for. Of course, between what we wish and what is going to be the final result, we have this whole process that is going to lead us to this path, but that is the exact idea that we have. Thank you very much. Elsa Mendonca for more of innovation. Congratulations to the state of Acre for presenting an elaborate 10-year plan considering the future. In part, Monica de los Rios already asked the question you already answered, but uh, today the plan is uh, under the responsibility of Siplangi. And what is going to be the second step? Uh, this plan was not finished yet. So how is this secretary going to be, secretariat is going to be integrated with other secretariats? Because this plan is supposed to be under the relation, the responsibility of all of the secretariats. This is a question to Vasci and to the Don Cabral Foundation. You have three scenarios. So at least in the future, what is the perspective for the state of Acre? Which would be the uh, essential conditions for this plan to work? Elsa, while the plan is under the coordination of CEPLAG, the coordination among the secretariats will depend on the design of the sectoral governance. We are still carrying out this design. So today I cannot answer you on how this integration is going to happen. We have ideas that are being discussed and we haven't had this decision yet. But I hope there will be this integration or else nothing that we presented here will make sense. So we are working with this perspective. When we have an idea, I'll send you an email. Adding to what Vasti said, what is the intention? The hiring of the foundation was based on three great deliveries. The first one is the agenda for the next 10 years. The second one is the development of this 10-year agenda for the government of Acre at a state level, of course. We have the three spheres, but the focus is the state level. And this uh, 
four-year agenda will be broken down for the secretariat and the state bodies. So you have three great levels of planning structure. Within the level of secretariats, of course, each secretariat is going to be focused on their results. But the objective is that this, these results will contribute for the government plan to be achieved and the government working with other bodies of the civil society, either the Federation of the Industries or the trade body or the engaged civil society can generate results for the bigger plan. The assumption before a territorial plan is that the government cannot reach those results by itself. That is why it needs the work of other spheres, other bodies. And you ask what is essential for this plan to work? All plans have as a purpose to uh, get to the goal that you choose, which in this case are the values for the society. What are the public values that you're going to generate for society? But this is not a strict plan. And that is a big problem. When we, when we start losing the view on the final goal based on our needs, our daily needs, we start moving away from the goal that we, the values that we want to deliver to the society, and we start getting very self-centered. So there are three great uh, goals for this plan to work. Continue approximating the government spheres and the civil society, and without that, we're going to move further and further away from the values that we want to generate for the society. The second one is the capacity of the public administration. We have to develop people so that they can deliver the results. There are no results without people. I can have the best processes, the best technology, the best structure. If I don't have good people, I'm not going to deliver good outcomes. So I think the second element for me is that we have this constant development of the public workers. And the third element is the availability of infrastructure. I can have the best people in the world, but if I don't have good working conditions, I'm not going to deliver the potential that I can deliver. So I think these are the three great elements for us to the deliver the results that the society needs. And speaking from outside, because the Don Cabra Foundation has a lot of contact with the civil society and the private sector, I notice a very genuine desire from Acre in building these elements and making these things be available, in fact, for the results to be achieved. If we, if they will be achieved or not, the future will tell, but uh, the planning is looking at the future, but we have to make the decisions in the, pres in the present. Good morning, Cornel Messias. I am the chief of office for the governor. I would like to congratulate Vasci for the presentation. I'm proud of you. And I would like to congratulate all of the workers of the planning secretariat that took part in this work. My question is legal. Maybe Dr. Rodrigo can assist me regarding the instrument. The planning that will happen in the Constitution Amendment, if the Institution Amendment will be the most uh, appropriate instrument. From the legal standpoint, an element of this kind is completely possible to be included in the Constitution. Obviamente, por condição é, do ponto de vista da, uh, das exigências... Obviously, from the standpoint of the requirements, and uh, as you said, um, uh, regarding the caucus, this is a choice of the government. The government has to be 
comfortable uh, in having the caucus and the assembly. We chose the amendment in the Constitution because we decreased the re risk in having amendments afterwards in case it is a legislation or in case it is a, an administrative action. We have a certain degree in losing uh, the capacity of this amendment throughout time. If you make this amendment or this change at a constitutional level, we can perpetuate it to the future. That is why it's important to have this participatory process so that everyone feel represented and to make that organically work later. I'm not sure if um, this is already defined that there will be a constitutional change, but uh, the higher the degree of co uh, caucus requirement, the higher the stability of the change will happen in the future. Rodrigo, Dr. Rodrigo knows much more than I do, but something that was not very clear is what will be led, led to the constitutional amendment is not the plan that is happening now. What will be taken to the constitutional amendment is the mandatory repeatedness of this plan in the future with the participation of the society. We we will also discuss the management contract with the secretary. This this is this comment is just to make the differentiation. Do we have any other questions? Then I will make a brief summary of the table as a mediator. We saw here that the state is presenting to the society, to the partners, and to everyone who is here at COP, a commitment of a stability in the public policy for long term. It is proposing a long term commitment with huge efforts. You remember, we remember this. If you're planning for a month, the risk of planning is relatively small because you can establish this in smaller activities that you can monitor and work it out. The longer the planning, the higher the risk. So the moment that the state is willing to do a 10-year plan that transcends elections, it is taking a higher risk, which is the difficulty of implementation because of time. In order to reduce this risk, we have three elements. In practice, we have three elements that establish the reduction of those risks. The first one, as it was highlighted, is the methodology. The plan is so good and it has so many methodologies as the methodology that was used. So many risks as the methodology that was used. The second element to reduce the risks that I can notice here is the determination, the political determination of carrying out this plan. If you don't have the uh, compliance of the governor, the risks will be very high. So it can be the technical quality and the commitment of the governor that help reducing this, these long-term risks. And the third point is making this management process the more organic and participatory as possible. This is the third point. So if we have technical quality, if we have the governor's commitment, the critical point is participatory governance. It's how to make this something internalized in the state structure to guarantee that 
this culture will be disseminated in the administration so that this plan can continue with time so that this doesn't turn into a paper a piece of paper inside a drawer these the perspectives are excellent i'm very happy to be following this plan so that we can create this operational system and create applications like we have with CISA. We have this problem that uh, environmental services become just applications, like the deforestation reduction plan, the sustainable development plan, all of those become applications. So that is why it's important to reach our goals throughout time. That is why it's important that we reach our future vision, that we have economic development, the generation of wealth and the commitment of the natural resources. We have all of the elements there. It is not a trivial challenge, but the luck is there. The luck is launched. Thank you very much. We wrap up this panel.